हरि ओम नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू मौनिका मदगुला राइट्स हरि ओम गुरु जी राधर दैन कॉलिंग इट रा इमोशन इंडीड इट इज अवर रिएक्शन टू योर सिचुएशन हाउ आर वी कंडक्टिंग अवर सेल्व इन दट सिचुएशन बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट आर वी सकम्बिंग टू इट और डू वी हैव कैपेसिटी टू नॉट रिएक्ट one thing i am realizing though guru ji at every point reacting positively has a better effect of course we are humans we get angry but can we work on it for me raw emotions are pure and i have a tendency to just exhibit as i cannot hold back especially when it is pleasant but i could be wrong everybody prefers the company of a pleasant person not a grumpy one can we make ourselves pleasant and handle with ease everything is work in progress one day we will reach if we start putting efforts with lord's blessings the barometer you mentioned isn't it the intuition though guru ji you had shared in your earlier video that intuition is more from the mind but sometimes i have a strong feeling for a person or a situation whom i have never met before or faced before <laughs> before we dwell into monica's things whatever she has expressed first we have to understand what is mind mind is a very good mathematician it knows addition it knows subtraction it knows multiplication it knows division it knows calculus it knows trigonometry it knows algebra it knows everything mind is manipulative by nature okay generally mind manipulates if i want to achieve something and that cannot be achieved by normal means then if my desire to achieve it is more i start manipulating things as to how to achieve it so mind is a good manipulator okay. first we have to understand this okay instantly some feeling comes it is not from the mind instantly any emotion comes it is more from the heart but when it is not sporadic when there is a planning behind it then it is more from the mind okay a very small kid when it wants to have a toy and when the parents are refusing it it starts crying it starts doing all gimmicks at that particular point of time it wants to have the toy it gets a signal from the mind what is it i have to do to achieve my object the objective to achieve what is it i have to do it starts crying it start making a mess it knows very well that if it does all this the parents will get the toy even for a small kid though we call children as innocent there is some mind which gives an idea to the kid and please remember the action is very instant instantaneous action even though it is instantaneous here it is not from the mind it is not from the heart i'm sorry it is from the mind absolutely it is from the mind not from the heart please remember so raw emotions are more from the mind try to understand this when you are liking something and when you are exhibiting it's not raw emotion it is a very balanced emotion 
because it is very positive. You like something, it is directly from the heart. You like to that extent that you are exhibiting your emotion. It is directly from the heart. Okay. It's not raw emotion. The raw emotion is more of a negative thing. It is more a negative aspect. It has got nothing to do with any genuine emotion that comes out. Okay. It is purely from the heart. The heart exhibits certain emotions. When you like something, when you do something for somebody, it comes from the heart. Because you do it wholeheartedly. That is why we call it wholeheartedly. Okay. This manipulation, anybody can do against anybody. Please remember. Sometimes people use the mind to manipulate others. You should not allow others to manipulate you through their mind. Of course, mind is needed, mind is required, but where mind has to be applied, where mind should not be applied. Suppose there is a personal relationship. The personal relationship is more from the heart, it is not from the mind. Okay. If there is an impersonal relationship, it is more a relationship from the mind, not from the heart. It is impersonal. Anything personal must be totally from the heart. If a personal relationship you are going to use the mind, then there is no personal relationship. The relationship is totally impersonal, though it may look it may be sometimes even between husband and wife, between parents and children. Though it is supposed to be a personal relationship, is it really personal? No, it may not be. They will be using the mind in different ways. In all such instances, it means it has become impersonal. And one is trying to manipulate the other through the manipulative mind. One is trying to work out things with the other through that mind. They may use any drama, it may be crying, it may be shouting, it may be anger. Of course, they will be exhibiting and in return, yes, the way we react, as you rightly said, Monica, the way we react may douse the fire or may pour fuel into the fire. So can you be balanced at every point of time? That is where awareness comes. If a man is, if a human is full of awareness and he is able to look at the other person, watch at the other person, when he does the watching, When he is able to observe continuously, he will know, he will know how to handle things. If the other person is throwing some tantrums and he is trying to manipulate your mind and we also join, then it is more raw emotion. Raw emotion doesn't mean that your spontaneous reaction to something. That spontaneity can be from the heart. Sporadic. Spontaneous. You see something and you are full with a lot of love, compassion, gratitude, thankfulness. All these things sporadically come out. They are very balanced emotions. They are very positive emotions, whereas raw emotions are totally imbalanced. Okay. They are totally negative. They are not positive. This is the aspect which we have to look into. Then comes emotional turbulence. Because 
the emotion was not properly directed. The emotion has not been from the heart. It has been from the mind. Leads to a lot of emotional turbulence. Human mind is such. That is why people go into pranayama, they go into meditation, yogas, different types of yogas. They practice in order to see that the mind is controlled. Mind looks as though it is controlled. Mind looks as though it is controlled. Half an hour you do meditation. At least half an hour nonsense will be avoided. Half an hour you do japam. Half an hour you won't be interacting with anybody. That way it is very good. How many people can really calm the mind by doing meditation or yoga is a billion dollar question. Of course, a saint, a seer in the Himalayas, they know. They know what to do. They know how to do. The mind part is like that. Whether we like it, we don't like it, we always react. I will tell you a story. There was a very big Sanskrit pundit. His name was Naropa. He was a great Sanskrit pundit in those days in Nalanda. He knew everything, everything probably. Yes, he was a master in everything. Sanskrit literature, Sanskrit grammar, Vyakarana, everything. He was a very great pundit. One day he was sitting and he was doing some religious work. He was showing his back to the sun and he was doing he could see a big shadow by his side. He turned, he found a very old woman standing there. A very old woman. He turned towards her and he asked, who are you? She smiled and said, Naropa, I know you, but you do not know me. My name is Vimalakriti. I have heard about you. They told me that you are a very big Sanskrit pundit, Sanskrit laureate. I just had one urge to ask you one question. Just an urge for a long period of time. I have been always desirous of meeting a Sanskrit Pandit like you and asking a question. So, I just want to ask you one question, one simple question. Okay, ask what is there. Let me try to reply. You are reciting a lot of scriptures. You know a lot of literature. You know Vyakaranam. You know everything. You have learned everything. You know only the basic part of the language or you have an in-depth knowledge of the subject. When you prophesy something, when you say something, are you saying with authority that this is right and you propound it in such a way that you have understood the meaning and that meaning has sank into you and the meaning is coming right from the center of your consciousness. To that extent or is it just, you know it, just on the top of it and you do not, it is a shallow knowledge and you do not know the in-depth part of it, you do not know the abyss of it. Naropa said, yeah, yes, I, I know only the top portion of it. She laughed. <laughs> she laughed in a very big way. She laughed like anything. 
She was going on laughing. Then Narupa said, Of course, in certain things I think I know the abyss of it. She stopped laughing and she started crying. She was crying inconsolably. Naroba could not console her. She was crying, crying, crying. Then she stopped. Naropa, initially when you made the statement that you have only the knowledge from the top, you have a little bit of shallow knowledge on the subject and it is not in depth. It is not from the conscious. I was very happy because I thought I have found a true Brahman. Brahmins never tell any untruth. They are very sincere. They are very honest. They are very honest to their feelings, thoughts. They are honest in everything. Manasa, vacha, karmana. In everything. They are so honest. They are practically the Lord themselves. They are truth. They are truth by themselves. I was so happy. So I laughed. I smiled to exhibit my happiness. But suddenly you changed your version. And you said in the middle that certain things I know, it is from the conscious. I thought, alas, what has happened to this Brahmin community? They have started speaking lies. This has really hurt me. I was never hurt like this. Whatever opinion I had about the Brahmin family is gone. Brahmins, it is gone. Now I know Brahmins will speak untruth, lies. Narupa, I am hurt. That's why I cried. Narupa very impressed. Narupa was very impressed. With what? He heard from Vimalakriti. He prostrated her. Please accept me as your disciple. I would like to be your disciple and learn something better in life. Of course, I have learned a lot of things, as you rightly said. It has not touched my conscience. It has not sank into me the way it should have sank. It has not sank into me. It has not sunk at all. That being the case, now at least I want to be a changed person. You have opened my eyes. What all I was doing all these years is just a criminal waste. Now, Vimalakriti said, I am very old. I don't have time for all this. And my life is different. You want to know truth? You want a master for that? I will suggest you, there is my brother. He lives in Himalayas. His name is Dilopa. Go to him. He will give you that much of knowledge. Why knowledge? Wisdom. About this life. He will make you to sink into your conscience and see truth, experience truth for yourself. Please go to Himalayas. Where can I find Tilopa? I do not know. One day he stays here, one day he stays somewhere. Where he stays, I do not know. Go search for him. Search for him. Go on searching for him. You will find him when he decides to find you. When the disciple is ready, the master arrives. So when you are ready, when he feels you are ready, he will himself appear. But don't stop searching. Please search. Naropa went to Himalayas. He went out searching. There were a number of incidents that happened on the way. 
where Tilopa was came in many forms. He came as a dog, he came as a person without limbs and legs. He could not understand at that stage and he overstepped. Tilopa used to laugh at him and make a statement and disappear. Finally, he was going on searching with that desire to have him as the master. The disciple should have ultimately the desire the desire to that extent to be with the master forever and be with him and die with him. To that extent, the desire must be deep rooted. Then the master appears. Then the disciple himself becomes over a period of time a devotee also. Totally devoted to the master. To that extent, his desire to meet Tilopa and accept him as the master was like a fire raging. Then he was looking at everything and he was just thinking whether this is the master, that is the master, that is the master. He went on. Finally he reached his, a place where there were many saints sitting outside. They were busy smoking hawker. Yeah. All these people he asked, can, we, can I meet Tilopa? Where is he? I go inside, there is an old fellow sitting and doing something. His name is Tilopa, we think. You just go and see. So he went inside that cave. One person was sitting there, an old man, very big beard, very deceptive. The longer the beard, the greater the deception. <laughs> he had a long beard. There was some water and there was some fish going in the water. He just took the fish from the water and he placed it down. The fish wriggled and died. Once again he took one more fish, placed it on the floor. One more fish, placed it on the floor. All the fish were dying. Naropa saw, he's a Brahmin. What is this? Vimalakriti, she sent me to such a person who kills fish. He is smiling as they are wriggling to death. To such a person, is this the master I have been searching for all along? So many days, so many weeks, so many years I have spent to search for him. Is this what I have to see? Tilopa looked at Naropa, smiled. He took back the fish, which is already dead, and put them back into water. They started swimming. Naropa was surprised. Tilopa smiled. What makes you to come here, Naropa? He asked. He was stunned. How oh, this master knows my name? Malakriti could not have come and those days they didn't have mobile to inform. No master, I want to become your disciple. Vimalakriti has sent me. Yeah, I know that. I have to test you before I accept you as my disciple. He made a very daring statement. He told him, you go and bring your wife. You go and bring your wife from Nalanda. Please bring her. Naropa was a bit confused. What for? Yes. What for? Don't ask me. If you want to know the reality, I want to sleep with her. 
a poet, Rocky Smith. He just said, my wife is here. Dilopa said, please come into this room. They went into a room and he closed the room. There was a room inside, another cave like. Inside the cave there will be some other caves. There may be some side caves, somewhere he went. Three hours he didn't come out. What happened, nobody knows. Afterwards, she came out, she prostrated Dilopa, she went away. Tilopa now saw Narupa's face. Tilopa was observing the mind of Narupa. The mind was very pure. The mind was very conscious. The mind did not have any doubts. It was more the heart in the form of mind. If my master has asked something, there must be a reason for it. And whatever he does is for the good of the world. Even had he used my wife, that might have been for the good of the world. His mind did not suspect his master. His mind was very beautiful, very subtle, very excellent. And Tilopa could only see the heart of Naropa and not the mind. The heart had overtaken the mind. To that extent, Naropa exhibited that he can be a true disciple. Tilopa. Okay. Naropa, I like you. I like you. You are fit to be my disciple. I am able to see your heart above the mind. Take that bucket. Please go and get some water. I need to take baths. <laughs> the emotions of Naropa at that particular point of time were very positive. So when you use the term raw emotions, it is negative. It is not just pouncing. That emotion which comes from the heart is sporadic emotion. When it is raw, it is more negative. When it is sporadic, it comes from the heart. When it is raw, it comes from lower levels of mind. Mind does have different levels. It comes from lower levels of mind. Yes. Barometer means not the intuition, it is the soul is the barometer, the heart. The heart is the barometer. Heart is more closer to soul. That is where the consciousness emanates. So, the intuition is more from the mind. But from the heart something comes. From the heart something comes. It is directly from the soul. When you see somebody very close to you, very close to you, very nice person, very positive, what the first thing we do is we hug the person or we shake hands with the person. Is it not? Okay. That is a sporadic emotion which is more positive and it comes from the heart. Raw emotions are negative when most of the time people throw tantrums. And the reason behind it is there is emotional exploitation. Okay. That 
that emotional exploitation is because of mind manipulating certain things so that it can be this way, that way. See, every parent most of the time is more interested in their kids becoming a, um, a good engineer or a good doctor or a good accountant or a, a, good, a, a good manager, all these things. Okay. No parent is interested in making a kid a good person. Of course, for their life, they can always learn. But what they should really, what, if at all even conditioning is there, it should be more towards making him a good person. But most of the time it is not that. It is more for him to survive in life. Survival in life can be always be there, it's not a big thing. Okay, so there is something in the books and you have to read and vomit it, for which uh, you don't need any big uh, coaching. Okay, even you may go coaching also, you will pay so many people are going, they are learning, all right. But your person, your son or daughter must be more closer to heart. They must not be people of the mind, they must be people of the heart. To a little bit of education, qualification, all these things, nowadays kids have got enough in intellect to manage all those things. It's not a big thing, you can put them in some institute, they will get through all those things is not. But how are you going to develop them as a person? As a person, as a lively person, who is not only useful to himself, but also useful to the nation, to useful to the society, useful to the world, useful to the environment. What are the steps you are taking? No. Because the mind is driven by certain things, no, 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 he has to become this, he must be this, that, that, as though all others are. Okay. The other day I was reading some IIT Bombay or something. They said even after securing everything, they are not getting proper jobs. Once again, the problem is incommensurate to qualification. There is enough work to do in our nation. Please remember. Why we are today having, we are saying jobless, 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 we don't have jobs is, people are not prepared to do work. They want job. Job means incommensurate to my qualification, incommensurate to what I have read, in, the job must have a year, enough for compensation, this, that, that. You have hundreds of things listed. In life you want to really do some work and some money, you can always. There is plenty of work available in Bharata Desha. It is not short of anything. But the way you look at life is more important. What is it you want? Okay, thank you very much. God bless you all. See you some other time.